Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Where Do We Go From Here broadcast. This is Minister David Bowen. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you uh, for the awesome price that you paid on Crowley's cross in uh, the form of your son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, died, rose again, that we might have right to the tree of life. And even now sits at your right hand making intercessions for us. Lord, we pray that you bless this broadcast and let it be a blessing, blessing to every viewer, listener, and um, and let it let it change lives. Let souls be saved. Let bodies be healed. Let relationships be mended. And then, Father, we pray that you get all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Well, once again, brothers and sisters, welcome to the Where Do We Go From Here broadcast. For just a little while, a verse of scripture in 1 Kings chapter 20 and verse 28. 1 Kings chapter 20 and verse 28. It just says, uh, And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus says the Lord. Because the Syrians have said that the Lord is God of the hills, but not God of the valleys. Therefore, I will deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Let us read it one more time. And there came a, a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said the Lord, this is God of the hills, but not God of the valleys, therefore I will deliver all this great multitude into the, thine hands, and you shall know that I am the Lord. For just a little while, let's talk about a anytime, anywhere, any place God. Brothers and sisters, it's important for us to recognize that if we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we serve an omniscient God. Simply mean that he knows everything. And an omnipresent God simply means that he's everywhere at the same time. And an omnipotent God. He's an all-powerful God. So, brothers and sisters, uh, when we serve the God that we serve, the God that made heaven and earth, we serve an anytime, anywhere, any place God. And uh, just to give you a little background on what we were talking about in 1 Kings, there was a war between the Syrians and the Israelites. And the war, there was a war even before the one that was about to take place. But in the war pre, prior to that, the Israelites won. And so they were warned by the prophet that in the spring that the Syrians would come back again. And there was a prophet for the Syrians that told the Syrian king that that the Israelites' God was a God of the hills, but if they got them in the valley, that they would win. And that's when God gave them the message to the king of Israel. And he says that uh, because they say that I am a God of the hills and not a God of the valley, but I'm going to deliver you in the valley. And it's important for us to know that, brothers and sisters, oftentimes the enemy have told us, uh, he tells us that, uh, that uh, when, you, uh, when you're in church, when the service is high, when the organ is playing, the church is shouting and the, and the, and the, and the word is going forth in power, the enemy is still and he don't bother you because he thinks of God as a God of the hills. But as soon as you get to the parking lot, yes, sir, brothers and sisters, there's a commotion that takes place. Why? Because he, he got you in the valley. And uh, oftentimes we buy into that. Oftentimes we buy into that. But brothers and sisters, uh, God, we serve a any place, anywhere, any time God. And God is God whenever and wherever. 
He is. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters. We are we've often we are we are bombarded with messages. Uh, what goes on in Vegas stay what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That type of thing. But the God that we serve, he's in Vegas as well. You know, uh, when we go to certain places, you know, some people go as far away as as, uh, as Thailand, Bangkok, to do things that they know that are not acceptable here where we live by society. And uh, being things not being accept, accepted by society is not a great thing nowadays. But they go as far as our Bangkok, Thailand. But God is there as well. But see, the problem with the thinking of the Syrians were pretty much the same a problem that, that Jonah had. They always viewed God as a local God and figured if you went far enough that you can leave the presence of God. But uh, that's not true. Brothers and sisters, we, like I said earlier, we serve our omnipresent God. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Uh, the, the psalmist said, Behold the eyes of God. He's searching uh, the, the good and the evil. So, brothers and sisters, God is a, a knowing God, and he knows where we are. So we're looking at the scripture, and the Lord and there came a man and spake unto the king. There came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel, saying, The Lord, because the Syrians have said the Lord is a God of the hills. Now it's important to know that we should serve God in the good times. We should serve God in the good times. You know, if we in today's society equate God as being God, when things are going good, when things are high. But oftentimes, that's when we forget about God and we go our own way. But it's important to know that God is a God of the hills. God can take you, you can go as high in the Lord as he would have you to go. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters. And it's important that when God brings us up out, out, of, out, out of the miry clay, that we should serve him. It's important that when we are at church on Sundays and we are having a good time, we should uh, extend that good time past the church all over into the home and into the workplace and into the schools and wherever we are. We should still be serving God and worshiping God. And uh, But it's important to know that when things are not going as well, and it appears that we are in the valley, we are in the valley of life, where we are down low, but God is still God, and he's still our God. There's a song that they sing at the church that, that, that I belong to that says, if you have to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. And uh, yes, sir, brothers and sisters, Jesus, he's one that's willing to reach way down. We know that in the New Testament on many occasions where he healed the lepers by touching them. When uh, anybody else that had touched them would have been ceremonially unclean. But Jesus was, wish, was willing to reach way down. Guess what? And when he touched them, they became clean so that that didn't make him ceremonially unclean. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, and it's important and it's a good thing to know that not only is he willing to reach way down, he's not mind getting his hand dirty. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, he have had to pull us out. So not only is God a God of the hills and of the high places, but yes, sir, he's God in the low places. He's God in the valley. He's God in the valley of sickness. He's God in the valley of uh, degradation. If we take a look, just look back at the, uh, at what we call the prodigal son. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, who had went to his father and asked him to give him 
his portion of the inheritance. And he went out and spent it on righteous living. And there became a famine in the land. And brothers and sisters, he, uh, he had a job feeding the hogs. And he said he would have himself ate some of the pods that he was feeding the hogs. But uh, he came to himself. And he says that, that if I hired servants of my father uh, will, are doing better than me, I will come back home and put myself at the mercy of my father. Brothers and sisters, that's an illustration of how Christ and how God accepts us back when we are in the valley, when we have gone and made mistakes and did some things on purpose and caused us to be in the valley of despair and degradation. But it's good to know that God is an anywhere God. He, he can, and uh, he's an anywhere, to, and he's an anytime God. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, it's never too late to call on him. It's never too late to call on him. And he's at any place, God. You can't go too far to get out of his presence. So, brothers and sisters, it's important to know that even though we may be in the valley sometime, that God can deliver us out of the valley. And he's willing, if you look at the scripture closely, he's willing to uh, deliver his people in the valley just to show to make an open show of the enemy that he's a God of everywhere. He's a God of everywhere. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, there were times when uh, Israel went into Babylonian captivity and they took what we know as the Hebrew boys. Then they were groomed for three years, the Hebrew boys and Daniel to do government work, to work for the Babylonian government. And uh, they had jobs in administration. They were, even though they were in uh, a foreign land as captives, yes sir, brothers and sisters, they were in the hills, they were in the high places. But there came a time when they were expected to bow down and worship the the image of the king, and they would not bow down. And the consequences for that, we know is that they found themselves in the valley. As a matter of fact, they found themselves in the fiery furnace. In the fiery furnace. And not only that, but the furnace was heated 10 times hotter than it's supposed to be. It was heated extremely hot. And they were put into the furnace. And brothers and sisters, when they, the king asked them to, to look in and to see, they saw the three men that they put into the furnace walking around. But not only were there three, there was four. For brothers and sisters, the, the, the fourth one was like the Son of God. We're talking about an anytime, anywhere, any place God. Anytime, any place, anywhere God. So, brothers and sisters, God, you can't go too far. You can't go too deep. But he won't rescue you. So he was in the fiery furnace. And the end result was that they were taken out of the furnace and they didn't even smell like smoke. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters. So we're talking about a God that will be there in the valley with you. And there are other occasions brothers and sisters, where we can note that men of note were in the valley. The apostle Paul and Silas were in the Philippian jail after uh, preaching and casting out devils from a damsel in Philippi. Found themselves in the Philippian jail. And it says at midnight they sung. And I heard some of the uh, some of the preachers paraphrase. They say that that uh, perhaps Paul sang tenor and Silas sang baritone, 
It said when they start to sing at midnight, said God came in with a bass. And the bass was so deep that it's shaking the prison. And all the doors came open. And the jailer came and would have killed himself. Except for the apostle Paul said to him to do himself no harm. For nobody has escaped. And guess what? They went ahead and uh, preached Christ to the jailer. And he and his family were saved. Yes sir brothers and sisters. Paul and Silas was in the valley of uh, persecution because of their faith. And perhaps sometime we might be in that valley of persecution for our faith. But it's important to know that God is there with us. This is, uh, in my estimation, for me it's a very popular scripture. Philippians Chapter 2, starting at verse 5, and uh, where the, uh, the writer of Philippians, which is the Apostle Paul, says to us, to Let this man be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took on the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And found in a fashion as men. He humbled himself and became obedient to the death, even the death of a cross. Now we're talking about how Christ, being in the presence of God, how he was willing to come down into the valley where we were. Or where we were. And made himself of no reputation. It said, became obedient even unto the death, even the death of the cross. We know that the cross was not only uh, a painful death, but it was a shameful death. Not only was it painful, but it was shameful. But that's the extent of coming down that God did for us. Now, just think, he came found from heaven. And we've talked about heaven. You know, 12 gates in the city, gates of pearl, streets of gold. We sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he left that to come down and to redeem man. So if he did that, why and what would why wouldn't he do uh, why wouldn't he do anything else for us? What what good thing, as a matter of fact, uh, in the Romans he says if, if he did that. What good thing would he hold back? Verse 9 of, of uh, Philippians 2 says, Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and have given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and in earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters. God, this is the extent that he, he went to, to change and to come down and to redeem man. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19, uh, where, where in Philippians we talked about Christ doing it, but in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19, he says to this whip, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So it was God in Christ that was doing it. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and not imputing their trespasses unto them have committed unto the world, committed to us the word of reconciliation. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, Christ left heaven. And came down. He left Kevin and came down. And in, uh, in Philippians it says, uh, He taught it not robbery, being, equally, being equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, he didn't feel that his deity was something to be so eagerly grasped that he wouldn't come down and save man. So when he come down, for him, it was like coming down into the valley. 
But he had no problem with it. Why? Because he's the God of the valley. And he can deliver us in the valley. And as I said earlier, some of us are dealing with the valley of illness. But uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And he said in his word, he said, Beloved, I would above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. He also said to us that are dealing with sickness, as the psalmist put it uh, in a very, painted a very beautiful picture. He said, Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgive all thine iniquities and heal all of thy diseases. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, God, he come down into the valley where we are sick at and heals us. And he said he would above all things that we prosper and be in health. Then he said in his word for us to be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to let our requests be made known unto him. And his peace which passes all understanding, or which surpasses all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then he goes on to say, finally, beloved, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, and there be any, play, any praise, think on those things. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, he go on down into the valley of our mind. Sometimes we don't deal with physical sickness, but we're dealing with mental sickness. And uh, sometimes we're dealing just with a heart, a contrite heart, a heart that's not right. But God is willing to go in there. And guess what? Even though we look good at church and we say all the right things, we got to remember what God told the prophet Samuel when he went to anoint David king, when he looked at his older brother and thought that perhaps he was the king because of his stature. And because of his height and the way he built, God told Samuel that a uh, man looks at the outward appearance. And this is a paraphrase, but God looks at the heart. So brothers and sisters, not only do he go into the valley, is he willing to go into the valley of sickness? Not only is he willing to go into the valley of degradation and the valley of sin for men or for us. But he's willing to go in the depths of our heart. And he's willing to root out that stony heart. And give us a heart of flesh. That we can serve him. And that we can worship him. And that we can acknowledge him. Yes sir brothers and sisters. We serve in any place, any time, anywhere. Anything God. Yes sir. So brothers and sisters. Even though. We know and we're in agreement that God will save us and God takes note of our enjoyment of the high time. Let us know that also he's a God of the valley. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that we serve omniscient God in the Psalm, Psalm 139. Uh, the psalmist says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and thou knowest me. Thou knowest my sitting down and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts are far off. As I said earlier, God is acquainted. God sees man hard. Thou compass my path, my lying down, and thou art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. Whether shall I go from your spirit? 
or whether shall I flee from your presence? I ascend into the heavens. If I ascend into the heavens, thou art there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. And the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my rings, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and thy soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid, for when I was made in secret and curiously wroth in the lowest parts of the earth. Brothers and sisters, it's important to know that we serve uh, anywhere, any place, anything God. And there's nowhere that we can go from his presence. So that being the case, let us not only acknowledge God with our mouth, but let us acknowledge God with our actions and with our uh, behavior. Well, brothers and sisters, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Where Do We Go From Here broadcast. We encourage you to tell a neighbor, to tell a friend, to tune in as well. But we don't want to close this broadcast without giving you a chance to accept Christ as your Savior. If you don't know him, in the pardoning of your sins. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God have raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your uh, finished work on Calvary's cross. We repent of our sins and we accept you as Savior. Brothers and sisters, if you have said that simple prayer, then we believe that you are saved. And we encourage you to join yourself to a Bible-believing church and stay there. And if you don't have a church home, please feel free to come and worship with us at the Eureka Missionary Baptist Church, 1595 Lamar Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, the best church on that side of town. Thank you, and be blessed of the Lord.